This is the BI, a Soviet-built rocket-powered interceptor added to War Thunder as a prize for the strategist crafting event. Placed at Tier 5 BR 6.7 on the Russian line, the BI is unique in many ways, although primarily the fact of being a rocket-powered aircraft, something that is not shared by many vehicles in-game. The armament consists of a pair of 20mm Shavak cannons. These guns are somewhat underwhelming and are certainly one of the shortfalls of the aircraft. The guns themselves have a fire rate of 800 rounds per minute with 45 rounds per gun. This will give you roughly 4.5 seconds of trigger time, so you certainly want to avoid being too trigger happy when using these guns. As for ammunition, you have 6 belt options, although personally I use the tracer belts as the FIT rounds seem to be the most consistent when it comes to actually dealing damage to enemy targets. The aircraft is powered by a D1A rocket motor that produces up to 1,700 kilograms of force. The BI has enough fuel to power this engine at full power for 1 minute and 57 seconds, however the aircraft still performs just fine when only using 20-30% to thrust. This will drain the fuel much slower, allowing for a major increase in flight time while also being able to throttle up to 100% for short periods when needed. Using this method, I've actually found that the main limiting factor to staying in the air becomes the ammunition count rather than the amount of fuel you have left. As far as flight performance, the aircraft is certainly somewhat unique. The acceleration at full power is undoubtedly good for a 6.7 BR vehicle, and the maneuverability is fairly competitive at combat speeds, being able to turn with most enemy aircraft you will encounter if needed. Although the main aspect worth mentioning is the compression at speed. When passing around 450 miles an hour or 720 kilometers per hour, the aircraft begins to compress badly. This compression mostly affects the elevator and therefore for the pitch axis of the aircraft, which can be especially deadly when diving, as it might become impossible to pull out of the dive before contacting the ground. This was a lesson that I learned in one of my early matches in the aircraft. Even more so, the aircraft can accelerate to this speed range even in a shallow dive with no power from the engine. So in some situations, you might need to restrain yourself from following a diving enemy aircraft as this could likely lead to compression. The BI does feature some armor in the form of two 5.5mm thick steel plates in front of and behind of the cockpit section, and a single piece of 64mm thick bulletproof glass that makes up the front section of the canopy. Additionally, the aircraft has a pair of camouflage options, a standard bicolor scheme, and a grey scheme that can be purchased for 200 golden eagles or earned for getting 430 kills. The BI also features a detailed cockpit model, certainly a benefit for those that wish to play the aircraft in simulator mode. So jumping over into some gameplay, in Air RB, our first game is on the map Corson, and you know, we're in a down tier, we've got some BF-109s, uh, I decided to go for this BF-109K that was uh, engaging some friendly bot aircraft. So going in, uh, I expect him to try and evade, but nope, he seems to be totally tunnel visioning on that bot attack aircraft. So you know, I waste a few rounds there, not the best attack run, but I do get a critical hit, so a reasonable start to the engagement. Still completely tunnel visioned, doesn't seem to notice me whatsoever, so I just go in, do some light uh, light bursts, and uh, finish him off. So yeah, pretty easy first kill that, BF-109 was definitely just tunnel visioning on those bot attack aircraft, uh, not really paying any attention to uh, to my attacks. Going in on a Kika, but then I see Atar 152 pulling up, I use the competitive maneuverability of this aircraft to pull around onto his tail and uh, very quickly dispatch of that Tar 152. Uh, the Kika then uh, does make some moves, uh, looks like he's coming for a head-on. I only have 8 rounds of ammunition left, as said 45 rounds per gun, 800 rounds per minute fire rate, so you do not have much trigger time with this aircraft, so you will need to be quite careful and quite precise when you are using those guns. So I say in chat that I have 8 rounds left, a friendly P-51 comes in and uh, you know, I have just over 30 seconds of fuel at full power remaining, so I decide this is a good opportunity to fly back to base and uh, get both my fuel and my ammunition uh, reloaded. So after taking off, uh, I'm going to be primarily targeting bombers from this point forward. The Kika, uh, I believe at this point, has been dealt with, and now it's just two Junkers 288 bomber aircraft um, who are trying to hit our bases. 
With this aircraft, of course, the whole crew is clustered in one place, so if you can hit that enough, highly likely you're going to get a pilot snipe, as I did there. Uh, going head on, I believe they have a single turret in the nose with two, if I remember correctly, 13mm machine guns. So you go head on with them, they have a single turret. If you can, this is quite a small aircraft, so if you can maneuver a little bit, you can probably dodge those guns, and if you just aim for that crew compartment at the front of the aircraft, it's quite likely you'll be able to knock them out with minimal damage to yourself. So we then have the final enemy. Uh, I was chasing him, I expended some ammo attacking him on an, an initial run. I let him land, let him rearm, waited for him to get away from the airfield and uh, then I attacked. Again, head on, went for the crew compartment, got that kill and then I ripped my wing off. Going a bit quick, I was uh, saying GG in the chat, um, expecting that everything was going well and uh, while pulling a turn, I ripped off a bit of my wing. Luckily, not taking a death, I can still fly the aircraft, so uh, a pretty close call there, but nonetheless, a good end to that four kill game. Uh, a bit more than I was expecting to do. Four kills was, yeah, definitely more than I expected from the aircraft. Of course, I did land twice in this game to uh, mostly reload ammunition and just get my fuel topped up to allow me to be a bit more effective during the game. So into our second game on the map Road to Grozny, uh, just taking off on just over 30% power and really that's all you need and you can stay at that power level for a fairly shallow climb, get to a decent speed and a decent altitude by the time you reach the enemy aircraft. First uh, engagement, Messerschmitt 262, go into a dummy head on, pull out to evade his shots. As he pulls onto my tail, uh, I see him pulling on, put the power on, go into a climb, not much he can do, and at this point he's in a somewhat compromised slow situation where a friendly F-80 can come in and finish him off. And that is something you can do quite easily. Make an enemy think that you are a little slow target, they'll pull onto your six, and then just put the power on. Good thrust to wait with this aircraft, so you can just kind of pull away into a climb, and if they follow you, they will end up in quite a compromised situation where they will be easy pickings for friendly aircraft. And that is a very effective tactic with this aircraft, just to bait enemies into dumb situations where they will very easily be picked off. So moving on to our first actual kill of the match, Messerschmitt 262. I assume he was AFK climbing as he made no attempt to evade me. Uh, I just went up to 50% power, went into a shallow climb, followed him and very quickly caught up actually. So uh, not really difficulty despite the high altitude of this 262. Uh, yeah, two small bursts. First one was just a bit high. Second burst hit the canopy. Pilot snipe. Pretty simple kill there. And, you know, as said, he was probably AFK, so not much of a challenge. Avado. Um, so I was stalking this guy for a little bit, uh, waited for him to uh, land, rearm, take off, get away from the AA guns, as I don't want to be shot down by, uh, by AA. And uh, then I decided to engage. Uh, not going too quick. Obviously, he's quite slow after taking off, so not too difficult to catch up to. Um, quite a few misses there, quite a bit of wasted ammunition unfortunately, not my best attack run, but we did get a critical hit and uh, I was getting a little bit close to him, I don't want to crash into the enemy aircraft, so I decided to pull off and uh, kind of just stalk him, see what happens, maybe he'll go down due to that critical hit, maybe I'll need to re-engage. Keeping an eye on him, uh, it looks like he's pulling up so I think everything's fine, but then he just suddenly goes down, smacks into the ground and that is my second kill of the game. With the ammo I have left, I attack a ground target, because obviously this is a very good ground attack aircraft. And uh, then I also uh, just do a quick gun run with my last four rounds of ammunition on a bot Messerschmitt 410. Once that's done, I went and landed, took off again. There were two more enemy bombers, another Arado and a Heinkel 177. Although, unfortunately, they never appeared. I assume they were at very high altitude or camping at their airfield. Nonetheless, though, the points ticked down and we did win the game with two kills and one ground target for me. Overall, I personally think the BI is quite a nice vehicle. I've seen a lot of people saying that it is essentially useless due to the lack of ammo and fuel. Personally though, I disagree. Useless? No. Unique? Yes. The BI is very much a practice of restraint. You need to hold back from always pushing to full power, diving after enemies, or just throwing yourself towards what looks like a juicy target. You need to play it smart and really be aware of your fuel, speed, and ammunition count at all times. At first, this was a bit tricky for me, but I did quickly get the hang of how to play the aircraft more effectively, and then I could actually find some enjoyment in the BI. To be clear, the aircraft does of course have a variety of shortfalls, and if they put you off of grinding it, that is perfectly fair enough. 
although in my opinion the positives and the uniqueness of the vehicle outweigh the negatives by a fair margin. Well that's going to be it from me, thank you very much for watching the video, if you did enjoy please consider dropping a like, and if you wish to see more content such as this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.